Hi, I'm Kent. Recently I tried a new way to use my 3D printer to make a plaster mold. I tried this out on a test tile. There are a few things I did last time that I want to improve upon, so let's try that again. So as a quick refresher, I wanted to make a test tile that was this shape. So I printed this on my 3D printer to make sure that it was the form I wanted. And then here is actually one that I slip cast. So this was the result I, I needed. The idea was to make a mold for the plaster using my 3D printer. So here is the plaster that I cast, and here's the associated 3D printed part. So this here has the shape of my test tile, well, half of it. And then these pieces here come together to form a box. Plaster goes inside. In particular, this plaster went inside. I then pour the plaster in, let it set, popped it out, got my mold. I got two halves of the mold, that these went together. I poured the slip in, let it set, and that resulted in this part. Go ahead and check out the other video if you want to see that whole process. So there were a couple things I want to improve on. So I put together my 3D printed mold for the plaster. Oops, upside down. I put on these little alignment tabs so that I could get the thing roughly in place. What I didn't do a good job was making sure there was a seal. So I actually had plaster leak out. So these wound up being shorter than I thought they would be. That was okay since these were just test tiles, but it's the thing I want to fix if I actually go and make some real pots. So that was one of the problems. The other one is there are no alignment features in the mold. So these can be put together, but they can slide all around. So the two halves don't register against each other. So I wanted to fix that. And finally, I actually made my plaster mold this size itself. So when I designed this part, I was thinking this is the size of the final test tile that I want and I didn't take into account the shrinkage that happens. So this is already a little bit smaller since it's bone dry and once it gets fired, it will shrink even more. So I wanna go ahead and enlarge my plaster mold to account for that shrinkage. So here's my new parts. So one thing you'll notice right off is that it is larger. So I made this about 15% larger, which is about how much my clay shrinks. I've done some rough measurements before and I think that's about what it'll be, but it should be good enough for my test tile. The other thing you'll notice are these bumps here. So this one actually is a divot and this one goes up. And the idea is one side will protrude and the other side will be a recess so that those can align with each other. And then finally, this may be a little bit hard to see on camera, but there's actually a ridge that I put on the edge of this part and a groove that I put on this part so that they mate together in like this V style. And I'm hoping that one, that'll keep the parts aligned, but also be, provide more resistance for the plaster coming out. So those are all the changes I made. I think it's time to try it out. I'm going to go ahead and put some Murphy's soap on this as a mold release. That worked awesome before. I'm gonna do that again. I have a bucket here off the side that I put a garbage bag in so that I don't have to clean the plaster up. That also worked great. I'm gonna do that again. So let's get everything ready and make a plaster part. So while this is all in pieces, I think I'll go ahead and apply my mold release. I'm just gonna use some paper towel and dab it on. Last time I did that after the mold was already assembled and it was okay, but this will probably be easier. So take this and just rub it around. Do another quick coat, make sure there is plenty. Now I mentioned this in the last video, None of these faces will matter except for this part right here. This is the part that will be used for the slip casting. The rest is just support or will be the outside. So my previous attempt, I just put together packing tape. So I think I'm gonna go back to my foil tape just to make sure. I think the grooves will help, but this will only take a minute and it will save me a mess. So this slots in right there. I'm just gonna take little pieces of tape and seal it up. Now this piece goes in the end here. Next up is to mix the plaster. So one of the questions I had when I made this plaster mold was the ratio of plaster to water. I've used this a few times. I think it worked out pretty well. I didn't have any bubbles in it. so. I'm gonna do that again. So basically it's a one-to-one -one ratio of water to plaster. 
which is a lot more water that I've been doing relative to my old molds. So here is a bucket with a trash bag in it. I've already measured out my water, so I'm going to put that in. All right, and I scooped out some plaster, but I have too much in this. However, it's dusty, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my mask so I don't have to worry about the dust, and then get this to the right amount, and then put it into the water. All right, that is all the dust. So I can take my mask off and I will mix this up for a little bit and let it slake to absorb all the water. Okay, I think this is all mixed up and let's go ahead and pour it into the mold and see if it holds this time. All right, we got a few leaks already but way better than last time. All right, it looks like my mold is full and my leaks have stopped, so we'll call that a win. All right, we'll go ahead and let this set. Uh, clearly it leaked a little, but not nearly as bad as last time. So let's go ahead and remove it. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. You can really smell the Murphy soap. There's a little bit of flash here between the pieces. That's obviously where it leaked out. But overall, I am pretty happy with that. All right, cool. I only 3D printed one of these forms, so I only make half a mold. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up another batch of plaster and do this again so I have a complete mold. You can then see how well they fit together. All right, so here is the fresh one, and here is the one that I did before. And they fit together just great. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let these dry out, and then we can try slip casting a test tile. All right, it's taken several days, but these are finally dry. So let's go ahead and slip cast apart. So they should fit together just like that. Then I have a large rubber band. Spread that out so that it keeps them together. Doesn't take too much. All right, and just like a normal pot, we'll let that sit. All right, this sat for a while, and then I poured out the excess slip. You can see a little bit of it being hollow inside. So let's try and demold it. There's the rubber band. And there it came. So much like the last one, I'm getting a little bit of flash here on the side, but that's not a big deal. And then there's the test tile. I can actually see the layer lines from printing. That's pretty cool. All right, and it released. So this here is just a sprue so I could fill everything up and I will trim that off.
Was it worth remaking the mold? I think so. Um, it aligned better. I don't have these weird artifacts on the side. I have a pretty clean seam here. I can just trim that off. I also made it bigger so that it'll shrink and it'll be closer to the size that I want. I only made one set of 3D printed parts and I was able to make two plaster molds. So if I have a mold that's multi-part, I could print just one of them and repeat the part several times in plaster. Or I could make multiple of the same sets of plaster molds. And as I mentioned earlier, I think I'm going to revisit how these seem together. This V kind of worked, but it, I wind up taping it anyway, so it's probably not worth the effort modeling that in there. So every time I go and do some slip casting, I think I'll go ahead and make a few test tiles. So I have a bunch just laying around. All right, I was going to end the video there. However, after slip casting this test tile, I was trimming off the excess slip from the top and I discovered a problem. So often what I'll do here is take this plastic scraper and just scrape the clay that's formed on the top off. I'll put that in my trimmings and recycle it. However, I was doing that, I realized that I can actually still take the plaster off. So that's bad. This isn't hard enough and the plaster can easily get into my clay and contaminate it. In contrast, here's a mold I've done before and the same thing. I can scrape a little bit of plaster off, but, but very little. So this one's much, much harder. When I cast this one, I was getting a little bit of bubbles and there's still actually a few bubbles in the bottom here and they get worse over time. And so by making the plaster more runny, I was hoping to eliminate that problem. However, I have created a different problem. The plaster isn't strong enough. So I mentioned that before, I wasn't sure about my plaster consistency and that was the other reason I was making these test tiles and the plaster molds for them. So I think next up will be an experiment trying to figure out how much water I really want to put into my plaster. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. And if you have a good measure of the amount of water and plaster by weight in particular for making slip casting molds, I would love to hear from it in the comments. Thanks.